Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today, there's going to be a pair of wide receivers looking to make big plays on the field. It's Green's Bengals going up against Brett's Browns. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. The folks here in Cleveland, even though all the down years, have never stopped supporting their hometown guys, and we got evidence of that a moment ago as the Browns made their entrance. They are ready to do battle with the Cincinnati Bengals. Hello, folks. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gaughan. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right. Lots of options for both of these squads. It's an Indian summer afternoon. Perfect conditions for football. And off we go on EA Sports. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Fresh off the second start of his career, Deshaun Kaiser bringing the Cleveland Browns out onto the field. In that second start, week two, 15 to 31, 182 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. So not a good day for Kaiser. No, not at all. But remember, he had to leave with a migraine. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he left with a migraine, you know, midway through the game. But he showed some toughness because he returned. Normally a migraine can be so debilitating, you're done for the day. I think he proved a little something to his teammates by coming back, assuming the job again, and saying, listen, I don't give up on anything. Now a first carry for Isaiah Crowell. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And a look now at the starting offense for the Browns. 2016 was a very tough year for Cleveland offensively, but head coach Hugh Jackson, who also handles the play calling, has high hopes for 2017 with a revamped offensive line and his creativity in play calling. Eight yards to go here on second down. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Here's the look on defense for the Bengals. And I want to ask you about Geno Atkins. Since 2010, no interior D lineman has more sacks than him. And he has three through two weeks of the NFL season. And he plays the run as well. One of the best interior defensive linemen in the game. In fact, against Houston, remember the big hit he put on Deshaun Watson? Not long before Watson broke off the touchdown run. So Geno just needs a little bit of help. One other thing about Geno, can't get him in any post-game interviews. Not going to talk to you with me. <laughs> just not his thing. Come on, let's go! Brad, Play fake. Kaiser. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. Now that's a great opening series defensively. You force what should be a three and out on your opening possession. And great coverage there on third down to force the incompletion to set up fourth. The eighth-year man from Tennessee. This is Britton Colquitt on to punt. Back deep for the Bengals, Adam Jones. putting the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Bengals take possession. Here come the Bengals. Their starting quarterback, Andy Dalton. And it's been a challenging start to the season. His quarterback rating in the opener, the shutout loss to Baltimore, was 28.4, second lowest of his career. And week two, unfortunately, wasn't a whole lot better. Yeah, those are not Andy Dalton numbers. If you trace his career and his career arc, you saw a guy each and every year get better and better to the point where you're saying, okay, Andy Dalton is really carrying a team along with him. They'll need that Andy Dalton back and in a hurry because they've got to go to Green Bay in the upcoming week. And face an angry Packer group. Clear, 
The first carry now. This is Hill. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, that run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. Second down, Dalton. Blitz coming and down he goes. Joe Schober in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. So the sack, and now it's third and long for Dalton and the Bengals. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. Able to get away. That's why he keeps the legs churning. He's going to air it out deep for Green. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. But one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you're going to give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. Now the left-footed punter in his ninth year, Kevin Huber on to kick. Jabril Peppers is deep for Cleveland. Fielded at the 20. Oh, and now he bowls him over. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. They begin with a run by Corral. And not much. Maybe a yard up to the 29. Partner, you know I love to point out when teams break tendency and do something a little bit different from the norm. But when you run the ball in the first play of the drive, that's not a tendency breaker at all. That's just trying to establish yourself as you move forward. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. Again, it's Crowell. And an alley to run. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. That's good for a Cleveland first down and 11 yard pickup. Career highs in receptions, carries, and total yards last year for Crowell. His total yardage was 952. That was the highest by a Cleveland Brown running back since 2010. And that sounds impressive, but I think there's much more out there for him. If Cleveland's plays even with people, not from behind, He'll get more carries, more touches, and his yardage will go up. Here we go! One, nine! Hey, hey, hey! One, nine! Hey. A first down carry now for Crowell. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. Yeah, that was the safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind. He hits like a linebacker. We see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed. A big hit for a loss. Come on, let's go! 
They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. It's a loss of four. Now third down. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. From the gun, Kaiser. He's got his tight end in Joku. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Kaiser now to throw on first down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think it's okay there they didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily, put it on him when your other targets aren't open. are now on second down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. here on first down. He has Britt over the middle. And he's brought down, but not before reaching the eight-yard line. A good pick up there, 22. Britt was with the Rams last year, of course, hit the 1,000-yard mark for the first time in his career. Maybe starting to figure things out a little bit now. Has to be a number one receiver in Cleveland who allowed Terrell Pryor to move on to Washington. And now a first down following that long gain. To the air again, Kaiser. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. That'll bring up second down. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. Here I go. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but. I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Let's go. 
They'll throw again. Kaiser, and he can't hang on. That's definitely going to be one he wishes he had back. Incomplete in the end zone. All right, Captain, it's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They come out with one back and three tight ends. They'll try to run it in. Johnson. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. Just a gain of two there, and it's going to bring up a fourth down. There are certain drives in the game where anything less than a touchdown that caps it feels like an absolute disappointment. This is one of those drives. On fourth down, off goes Kaiser. On comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal attempt. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And Gonzalez puts this one through. And the Browns are out to a 3-0 lead. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend, but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. After the field goal, here's Gonzalez to kick it off. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Encroachment the defense. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. Dalton with a give to Hill. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and it'll be third down. 
Good opening quarter for him. Remember, he had the sack earlier. Now a tackle for loss. Another tackle for loss. He's really making it tough on the play caller, though, isn't he? Because it's one thing to try and adjust when a guy is disrupting your running game. But when he's messing up your passing game as well, they may have to devote at least a second guy to him to try and keep him away from their plays. Third down, a shot here for Dalton. And that is incomplete. It's been this way most of the afternoon, hasn't it? This secondary really put this receiving core on lockdown. Listen, they've worked together like a basketball team is playing excellent defense. Great communication, doesn't matter whether it's man or zone. And especially against deep balls, as we saw there, they're not giving up anything to them. Here's Kevin Huber now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. This is taken at the 23. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here comes the Browns' offense back onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Crowell. That's a nifty running there. Ultimately, it doesn't get him a whole lot, but it does take him to the 45. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Kaiser now. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Well, we keep stats on everything, don't we? This is one that you don't want to have. That's his second drop right here in the first quarter. Yeah, I was going to say only in the first quarter. Certainly a ship that he wants to write quickly. The Browns on third down, just one for three thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try to run for it with Crowell. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Fresh set of downs here. Kaiser now from the 50. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Carlos Dunlap in there to sack him for a loss of six. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs>
Now a second down throw for Kaiser. Britt's got it complete. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Here we go. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Yeah, this punt will go out of bounds. I think it'll be inside the 25, and it will. Right at the 24-yard line is where they'll spot it. The Bengals' offense now, they head back onto the field. And this is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. They begin the drive with Hill. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Offensively, here's the lineup for the Bengals. And if you're a Bengal fan, close your ears, because this is a nugget you don't want to hear. You know, the Bengals are now the first team since the 39 Philadelphia Eagles to play their first two games at home and fail to score a touchdown. You had to go negative, didn't you? Well, I it's just a fact. <laughs> it's a tough and fact, too. I feel bad. Well, I think that now that they've changed offensive coordinators, that maybe they'll down focus a little bit. It seemed to me like they were trying to make everyone happy on offense. I think you go with Joe Mixon as your lead runner. I think you find John Ross, the rookie, in the passing game a heck of a lot more, give him more touches, and just get Andy Dalton focused. I think that's what they have to do to try and have some success. And, of course, they also have A.J. Green. Yeah, how did I, how did I skip him? He's their number one guy they've got to find. A.J. Green last year, a career low in yardage of his six NFL seasons. It was the first one he didn't post 1,000 yards. I was there against Buffalo when he pulled a hamstring early in the game and missed the rest of the season. So that's why the numbers were down. A healthy A.J. Green, we know what we're going to get. Big-time production. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 3 nothing is our score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, and it's the Bengals with a football to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. way forward to the 48. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Right. 
It's second down. Dalton looking. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. The connection since 2011. Dalton to Green for a Bengal first down. You think about the great tandems that we've had this decade in the NFL. Think about Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Big Ben, Antonio Brown, Brady, and Gronk. But look, Andy Dalton and A.J. Green, they have to rank in there, don't they? Yeah, and two guys that came from the same draft class. A.J. Green in the first round, Andy Dalton in the second round. And what they've meant to the Cincinnati Bengals franchise has been everything. A lot of playoff appearances. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Joe Schobert in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Second down, Hill, and able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. It's a four-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. On third down, Dalton. Now he's hit, and Dalton lost the football. And this is picked up by the Browns. He's at the 30, 10, and he'll score. Touchdown, Browns. And give some kudos to the defensive coordinator, I think, here. They bring the blitz, they dial it up and it turns into six points for him. It's so nice to hear you actually give kudos to the defense. It is so nice to such an offensive guy like that. I love it. He dialed things up, and boy, a big play resulted for his guys. Well, you like the credit to the defense there, right, my friend? Yeah, you do, do I ever. Zane Gonzalez on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So not only the cough up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way, the fumble return for a touchdown. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they will take over at the 25. Here we go with a player's spotlight, and we shine that spotlight on Andy Dalton. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. Yeah, I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. They start the drive on the ground with Hill. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dalton throwing on second down. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. <laughs> A big hit. Knocked down sideways at the 23. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yarded. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. From the gun, Dalton looks to throw. And that's complete to Croft. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. To throw on second down. Dalton voids the target and he has it over the middle. That catch good for five. It's third down. What terrifies defense is when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. And the Bengals on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Dalton. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively, and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. And the kicks away as he angles this one for the sideline. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. of a yard and it'll be second down he came out ready to play that's three tackles for a loss Charles rolling the second quarter and that's problematic for the guys trying to run offense because that means he's got a pretty good idea of what they're doing and is actually beating them to the point of attack and making those plays you have to think about some misdirection or something to try and get him away from the ball Second down, Kaiser. And his throw is incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, 
when they get back to the huddle, they have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Come on, let's go! Man. On third down, Kaiser. The Bengal pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Geno Atkins in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. As aggressive as Cincinnati is on defense, I was surprised that they only had 33 sacks last season. Yeah, bottom half of the NFL. I think that helped contribute to them not making the playoffs. Remember, they had a nice little run going. That's the first time they missed in the last six. Here's Britton Colquitt now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Jones on the return. Oh, an absolutely filthy juke. He's got some space now. A very good return there. Give him an even 20 yards. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Jeremy Hill now gearing up to go again as he marches back onto the field. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball a little bit. Maybe featuring other people touching it for a while. And then you've got a chance to come back to it when things have changed a little bit. They have to make an adjustment. Now still time for him here as we sit in the second quarter. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. Start offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. out incomplete this team is not gonna make it easy for you their physical group and we just saw it there on that play it came in made the contact just as he's trying to haul it in so the defense has put them in a tough spot it's second and long from the gun Dalton it's going to be too high. Out of bounds and incomplete. Tyler Croft, the tight end, the one he was looking for. And now it's third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Third and long. What will Dalton dial up? And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. A two-yard return there following a punt of 48. And the Browns will take over with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And the Browns getting set to go. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On the counter, it's Corral. 
Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Yeah, that wasn't a big run, just a short one there. But guess what? Sometimes you treat it like boxing. You throw that jab out there, and you throw it again, and you throw it again, then you come with a big punch later. Maybe they're just trying to set him up. again with Crowell. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. And he'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. The Browns on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and seven. Let's go! One, From the shotgun, it's Kaiser. And this is going to be incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on to punt for Cleveland. <laughs> oh, twisting away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And out will come the offense as they take over. We get a glance at the Browns' defense as they file into position. They have a little something to build off of from last time with a three and out. And what they have to build off of, great confidence right now. Being able to stuff someone on a three and out, you feel like you're in control now. You're doing the dictating. They want to see if that can continue as this game progresses. Will it continue? We'll see. Play fake here on first down. And he's got the hook up to Brandon LaFell. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-armed guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. The play fake to Hill. Dalton. This is going to be caught by the rookie. It's John Ross. And they're able to get this one down to the 25. Give him 30 yards there. Nice completion there for Andy Dalton. Charles, you worked some of his games when he was at TCU. Now you've worked his games in the NFL. What progression have you seen? I've seen a guy who took over as a freshman in college and got better and better each year. Always added a little bit more to his game, got stronger. But the best part about him is he's always been accurate. First down carry, it's Hill. They'll be brought down at the 21 after a pickup of four. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Dalton to Hill on the draw. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks at the 21-yard line. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. And while there was no gain on that run, we do know coaches whose identity is rooted in 
taking it almost to the limit and then changing things up on you down the stretch. I think we're getting really close to that point in time, though, where the identity may have to go out the window. And they've got to go a little bit faster in order to try and win the game. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Bengals on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and six. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, Marvin Lewis sends on the field goal unit. This from 36 yards out. And Bullock will put this one through. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So a little fortunate there because that one was definitely leaking right. Without a doubt. Maybe about the width of a football or so inside that right upright. But he got it to go. After the field goal now, it's Bullock to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. The Bengals' defense getting ready to go again. They got the stop last time that resulted in a punt, and then it resulted in three for their offense. And this is one time where the defense won't get credit for creating points, but that's exactly what they did. All right, forced him into a punt, turned it over to their offense. And guess what? Points went on the board. Points went on the board, three of them. Now they'll be looking for another stop. A first down throw for Kaiser. A screen complete to Crowell. <laughs> And they're able to get this one across the 35. 13 yards to pick up there. Good for a Cleveland first. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. first down quick throw that's complete on the inside slam and taking it across midfield and inside the 45 the Browns passing game finding its stride they've got another first down quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision and receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Oh, 
So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. down Kaiser and an incomplete pass that'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Oh boy partner did that just happen I've got my hand over my eyes right now because like like him it's gonna haunt my dreams too he was wide open how did he overthrow him there uh, defensively just very lucky you know that they got away with one there On second down, Kaiser again. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The Browns passing game finding its stride. They've got another first down. and 10, Kaiser. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. And they do get him down, but not before he reaches the four-yard line. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Again, it's Kaiser. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Set to foul as the first half is winding down. And the Browns add on to their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Gonzalez to add the PAT. It's up and good, and that makes it 17-3. So that drives six plays, 75 yards. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. Gonzalez now to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20.
Now a 10th carry for Hill. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. And this offense going to elect to burn a timeout with five seconds remaining in quarter number two. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. And unless this is a quick incompletion, this is likely the last play here of this first half. The final act of the first half, Dalton. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And it's knocked away and incomplete. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? Thanks, Brandon. And welcome to the EA Halftime Report. Let's take a look back at the first half. The Browns are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Bengals just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. All right, let's roll those highlights. Bengals have possession early in the first. Sobert's going to get the quarterback here. This will go as a loss of 10. Third down at the 41. Ball's going to be up for grabs here. Browns pick up the football and score, which takes the lead to 10. About halfway through the second quarter, Atkins will get the sack here. This one ends up as a loss of six. Browns with the ball, final seconds of the half. DeVal's wide open, able to make the grab. And he caps off the sixth play drive with the score. That puts them on top by 14. All right, Larry, these two teams back out there as we get set and ready for this second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And he'll take it out to the 25. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. They start the second half with Hill. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Again, they run with Hill. They'll only get a couple up to about the 30. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. 
But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Dalton now to pass. And that's complete to LaFell. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A Bengal first down, Dalton hitting LaFell. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. And the offense lining up first and ten. On the carry, it's Hill. Some tough running, but it only gets him to the 45. Gets a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Second down following the run. Throwing, Dalton. Green's got it over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A good pick up there, 26 yards. So here we go, first and ten now. Hill. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. No gain on that run. And while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. So second and ten here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. A Bengal first down on the 16-yard pickup there. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. They run with Hill, and he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. passing game finding a rhythm they've got another first I don't know what they talked about at halftime whatever it was it worked they look like a different team here in the third quarter yeah I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half what didn't and figured out a better game plan They'll run here with Bernard. 
Goldschmidt's comment is they're going to stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. I don't know if there's any other way to put it, but that play was blown up right from the snap. How about the guys on the defensive side of the ball? It's almost like they were in the offensive huddle. Yeah, it's one thing to stand them up from that one-yard line, pushing them back to the five, though. Wow. Yeah, I like what you just said there. Not just stand them up, but they end up making a play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And the offense readies for play number 10 of this series. Second and goal to go now. They'll run again with Bernard. And not a whole lot there. He does get a couple, taking it from the five down to the three. Well, sometimes I get caught in hyperbole, but I think they desperately need to punch this one in. They're running out of time. Yeah, two-score game, second half. You're down here. This is the time to put it in the end zone. And yeah, not going to get much better than this for an opportunity. Got to figure this is one they need here on third and goal. Dalton here from the gun. And that is caught. He's got it for a Bengal touchdown. Jeremy Hill from three yards out. And the Bengals able to get this back within a touchdown. That's the score you felt they had to have here in the third quarter to get back in this game. And you know that there's an emphasis on their side. Hey, we know this. We know where we are. But sometimes that binds you up so much that you try too hard, you don't get the score. A perfect combination of urgency, yet relaxed enough to get it done. And there's going to be a stoppage here. The booth wants to take another look at this potential touchdown. for the point after is Randy Bullock. And it's up through the goal post. It's 17-10. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's finished off with a Cincinnati touchdown. out now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here's the Browns now. They get set for their first possession of the third quarter. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time, too. Had to sit over there for a little while, didn't they? You know, they were eager, amped up to get back on the field after just scoring, hoping to get the ball back quickly. That didn't happen, so I'd say come out, just kind of get started again. You know, it doesn't have to be anything dramatic. Just get moving, get loose again, and see if they can get it downfield. Kaiser now to throw on first down. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. That time they hit him out of the slot on the drag. And that route takes some fortitude from the guy running it because he knows he's going through the briar patch, as I like to call <laughs> it, right? He's trying to work his way through all that traffic and people wanting to put a little contact on it. Really well done. Kaiser now on second down. Going underneath for Crowell. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. 
So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So the offense has it first and 10. On the run, it's Crowell. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. On second down, here's Crowell. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Now well, that play was doomed right from the start. He just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. The Browns on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Play action now, Kaiser. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. Defense. This home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Kaiser now from the 50. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's brought down. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. David and Joku, nearly 17 yards a catch in college. Those are wide receiver numbers. Yeah, went to Miami. Brad Kaya was his quarterback. They were a really good combo. Also, how about the wingspan of the young rookie? 35 and a quarter inch arms. Quarterbacks love that. That catch radius, huge. And what he does after the catch, really impressive. This is Crowell. And a short gain down to about the 33. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And here comes play number six on this drive. They stay on the ground. This time it's Johnson. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. He lost four there, and it's third down. I think there's one element that just keeps increasing on defense in the NFL, and that's speed. They want it at every position, and we just saw there some linebackers who can go sideline to sideline, run past that trash, go past people, and make tackles near the sidelines. Well, not only near the sideline, but also in the backfield there for the loss. The Browns on third down, lacking much success. Just two for seven to this point. This is third and ten. Come on, let's go! They go play action. Kaiser. Going up top. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield.
Kessler goes off on fourth down, and on comes the Browns kicker, Zane Gonzalez, for the field goal try. This from 54 yards away. And this kick is not going to be close. It's well short, well right to boot. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. The Bengals getting set to go. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going, and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense, or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent, but you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Second down, Dalton looking. And the grab by Croft. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Now they get 16 out of that one, but they'll still need to convert on third. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And Dalton to throw. He is going to find Hill here. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. The Bengals on a roll now. It's another first down. And when you have a guy in the backfield who can catch the football, you don't just use him strictly for check downs or dump offs. You make him part of the primary passing attack because what you're trying to do is get him into open field and then let him make people miss and advance the football. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They go play action here on first down. Over the middle complete. It's green. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we're back now here in Cleveland. It's the Bengals. They've got the football, but they trail here as we get rolling in quarter number four. This one down near the 15. A gain of three, second down. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. And 
and once again, Hill, he's been busy. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-oh, -uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and just like that, it's third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. Now, Bengals on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and eight. eight, eight. Out of the gun, it's Dalton. And it's caught. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. And the offense in a great spot. It's first and goal from the three. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? And now it's second and goal. Hill to try again. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And this offense on third down today, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. This is third and goal. They'll run it with Hill. No gain on the play, and what to do now on fourth and goal. Brandon, it's easy to make decisions from right up here where we are, right in the cheap seats, but let's be frank about this one. This isn't even a decision as far as I'm concerned. They have to go for it here. Field goal does you almost no good as time's running out in the game. If you want to win, you have to be aggressive here. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And no, it's incomplete. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Browns are able to come up with a goal line stand. So a top pill to swallow there, a would-be touchdown pass in and out of his hands on fourth. Sometimes it just comes down to execution, doesn't it? Because we're always questioning, should they go for it, should they not? Is it the right play call, is it not? In this situation, everything was right except for the finish. You have to catch the ball and convert. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. They begin with a run by Crowell. Gets out of a little bit of trouble there with a shifty move. He'll take it up past the six. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lent up. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 15. 
Nine yards on the pickup there, and it keeps the drive alive. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. First down carry now for Crowell. And that closed up quickly there as he gets it up only to about the 17. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the hands of your running back. Tell him to take care of the ball and try and move forward. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. It's a four-yard pick up there, and it leaves him with third and five. Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. The Browns on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This will be third and five. Come on, let's go. One, nine, five. Working out of the gun. Here's Kaiser. Dumping it off for Johnson. It'll be a two-yard game, and it'll be fourth down. I hate to surrender the football when you're nursing a slim lead, but they're going to have to punt it away. Trust that defense. It's the right play at this stage of the game as well. You don't need to press it here because you do have that little bit of a cushion and you count on your D to make it stand up. Here's Britton Colquitt now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. A well-hit ball there. 50 yards on the punt. Three on the return, and the Bengals take possession. So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And last time, they had it fourth and goal, rolled the dice, didn't get it. Now they've got to put that behind and try to put together another drive. A yeah, simple tip of the cap, a nod of the head to the defense. Congratulations, you got us last time. But you didn't hold us the whole time. We got down to position. We were able to be in position to score. Let's go ahead and attack again. Continue to have that kind of confidence. Not worry about the one play that didn't allow them to get into the end zone. And this time they'll be trying to get it into the end zone. We'll see what they do. Dalton, first and ten. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. Well, there have been a ton of sacks. They were just trying to prevent another. So what you're telling me is the conventional way has not really worked for them, huh? Not at all. Not at all. So he tries to grab him here, and they still get caught. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to look deep down the field. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Holding offense. That's on Cedric Abui, a first-round pick back in 2015. to throw. And oh, he coughs up the football near his own goal line. A call it locker skill, whatever the 
the case is they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. So they almost turn it over there. Scary moment. Second down here. Now a first carry for their fullback. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. That'll be a six-yard pickup, and it leaves him with a third and very long. And that was a good chunk of yardage picked up there. And the big fella, sometimes he doesn't need a whole lot of space created. He can make his own way. Now the Bengals on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and a mile. Operating from the gun. Dalton looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Erickson. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Well, the stats that matter on this play don't help a team very much, unless, of course, you're playing defense. If you're getting points per reception, you got a reception, but yeah. no yardage. Great job by the defense, though. They, they read through that one. They read through it, gave up no yardage, and people got credit for tackles. Pretty good deal. Punting now is Huber as he sends it away. Great coverage there. Holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the Browns will take over first and 10. The Bengals' defense gearing up as they take the field. They forced the punt the last time, got off the field. I'm, I'm sure some of your D coordinators through the years, you, you liked when you heard those words, get off the field. Oh, there's no doubt or maybe about you didn't it. like it when you heard those words. <laughs> it depended on when they were yelling them. But in this situation, absolutely perfect. Get off the field, force a punt, let the offense take over and do their thing, and it resulted in a field goal. Now we'll see if they can do that again. A first down throw for Kaiser. And he'll be taken down by the Bengal pressure. Geno Atkins busting through to get him for a loss of six. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Second down throw for Kaiser. He has Brett over the middle. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. They'll throw here, Kaiser. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brandon, more often than not, you'd say they've had his number. We can count them up so far. One, two, three, four sacks given up. But guess what? He's still been able to make some plays, and right now they have a lead. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Here's Jones. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bengals will have a first and 10 from deep in their own territory. 
Cincinnati now ready to take the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. On first and ten, here's Andy Dalton. It's caught. Left side, Brandon LaFell. And he takes this down deep into Cleveland territory. A big play there for the Bengals. 67 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And, of course, the quarterback in this situation, he's realizing time is becoming a factor. Let's see if they can get some points on the board here late. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Second down. They'll look to throw. And that's incomplete. This defense has watched their lead dwindle away. This is where they really need to bow up. They executed well there. And it's often hard after you've played really well early and then you kind of relax a little bit to step on the gas again. They just did it on the last play. Looks like they want to finish this one off. Back to throw. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Emmanuel Agba in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Big fourth down here, it's Dalton. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And this Browns defense stands tall. So they've gone for it twice now on fourth down of this game and both times unsuccessful. I wish we could hear the headsets now between the head coach and the offensive coordinator. Now that they're 0 for 2, if they get into a third situation, head coach might say, hey, you got anything for this one? <laughs> might get radio silence back. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Second and seven. Here we go. 38. 38. 
Again, it's Crowell. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And now the Bengals are going to call another timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. The Browns on third down, just a 20% success rate at two of 10. This is gonna be third and 13. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Here's Britton Colquitt now, as he's on to punt for Cleveland. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Browns, and they're happy in the dog pound, as we say so long from Cleveland.